Hey guys, um, so for the past couple of weeks I've been researching polymorphic malwares and uh, today I thought I'd create a demonstration or a scenario of what I've learned theoretically and try and execute that in a practical manner. Um, so if you're not sure what a polymorphic malware is, a really basic simplistic definition is that, um, well think of a virus that is continuously mutating uh, in form as well as in signature in order to evade detection from an antivirus system. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to grab an existing Trojan horse called Reverse TCP and um, we're going to encode it using Shikata Ganai, which will turn it into a, a pseudo polymorphic state. Uh, so I guess the first thing we're going to do is create the payload. I should probably double check the IP of this machine actually, could have changed. There we go, sweet, it's fine. And bind it to the port. Um, sure. And we're going to encode it. I'll put an executable that we'll call reverse TCP. Ultimately, what we want to do with this executable is import it into a, a Microsoft Office Word document so that when the victim executes it, it'll return a reverse shell to our machine. Um, now, executables can't exactly be um, thrown into a Word document because it'll just return a bunch of jargon. So a really cool thing that Metasploit, or not Metasploit, but Backtrack has is um, a conversion tool so we can convert this um, reverse TCP executable into a VBS script, which can be imported into a Word document. It's located in this directory, and we'll just jump in there. It's a Ruby script called exe to VBA. Uh, its input parameters is um, the executable itself, and it'll output a VBS script. So at this point, um, what happens is that the executable itself was turned into a polymorphic state and it'll have an encrypted virus body as well as a virus decryption routine which we'll see inside of the VBS script in a minute. Um, I'm just going to copy it to my desktop uh, for ease of access. And we're pretty much done on our backtrack machine for now. I just need to import this into a Word document, um, which is on my host machine. And we're actually going to have a look at this VBS script as well. So yeah, uh, in, in this scenario, I guess, the polymorphic malware will create an encrypted virus body, which is this section over here. It's our encrypted reverse TCP shell. And this section over here is our virus decryption routine. We're going to load this into a Word document as a macro and upon initialization of the Word document the macro will be executed which would then result in our TCP shell being decrypted and then uh, ultimately we'll get a reverse shell on the um, on our on our backtrack box. So I'm just going to grab all of this and throw it into a Word document And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our virus decryption routine, toss that into a macro. I'm pretty sure on Windows it should be relatively similar. Um, it might be somewhere else, but regardless, Windows um, versions of Office Word should have a macro function. Um, the reason I named it auto open is because the first function in the decryption routine is called auto up open. So yeah, we'll hit that function, uh, hit the decryption routine, and then decrypt our encrypted reverse TCP shell. We'll save this to our desktop, we'll call it reverse, oh no, 
we don't want to call it reverse shell. Uh, we'll call it research paper. Cool. Um, so yeah, uh, that's our payload pretty much done right there. I'm just going to zip this up. And we're ready to send it to our victim. The victim in this case is obviously me. Um, I'm going to attach the zip file. and the malware is on its way to the victim. Um, what we actually need to do now is actually listen for the malware upon execution, so we'll set up a MSF client for that. We'll set the payload to the exact same payload we uh, used, so obviously we'll listen for that payload. on this machine, our machine, and I think we used 4332, did we not, as a listening port? Yeah, cool. Um, and exploit. So now what we've essentially done is set up the client. Uh, yeah, so as soon as the victim executes that Word document, the reverse shell will know to hit our machine and return the shell there. Um, so I guess what we're going to do now is fire off to the client machine. Right over here. Um, before we actually do the exploit, uh, I wanted to show you that this is an updated copy of Windows 7. Um, so, yep, and uh, also it's running McAfee Antivirus which I just simply downloaded through VMware Tools. Um, the reason I used McAfee Antivirus was that I tried AVG, I tried Avira, Symantec, um, ESET, and OD32, and they would actually flag the macro upon initialization of the Word document, so the macro which contains our virus decryption routine couldn't decrypt the encrypted virus body nesting in the body of our Word document, therefore we could not get the reverse shell on our backtrack machine. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, McAfee does not flag the um, macro upon initialization, which will allow us to then get the reverse shell. So, uh, yeah, we're going to grab the um, payload as the victim. Obviously, we don't know it's a payload. So, oh, sweet, my friend, aka Amy, has sent me an email that uh, he needs me to have a look at. And save that. Great. Uh, yeah, we'll get to this later. So I guess our next step is actually to navigate to the downloaded um, files directory, which should be downloads. There it is. Unzip the file. And now upon execution of this, what we are hoping for is the macro to initialize the virus decryption routine, which will then decrypt our encrypted virus body nesting in the body of the document, hopefully bypassing McAfee antivirus's um, real-time scanning system, then returning a, return, uh, a reverse shell on our, um, on our backtrack machine. Um, fingers crossed, hopefully this all goes well. Great, so the victims now opened up the research paper document. Um, to them, it's nothing but a bunch of jargon, so I mean, they'll close it and say whatever. Oops, and that'll be the end of it, really. Now, if we go over to our backtrack machine, we'll see that, great, yeah, we've got the shell on the victim's machine. And to prove that, we'll just say, um, your machine has been compromised.
there it is. So uh, we were able to execute a macro. Oh, there it is, finally. Yep, so I guess McAfee's finally detected it, but that doesn't really do us much good because we've gained that shell. Um, and we have access to their machine. But uh, I guess my next step of what I really want to do is show you that that document will not be detected on any antivirus system. Whether the internal macro and the virus decryption routine is, is a whole different story, but the document itself will not return a signature, which is what I guess bypasses the antivirus detection um, in the first place. So yeah, if you're unfamiliar with VirusTotal, basically you'll just have a bunch of antivirus systems. I'm assuming that, my, or sorry, that Google is clustered together on various servers in order to uh, provide real-time scanning on potential malwares. Um, what I'm really hoping for is a detection ratio of 0%. So, yeah, we've uploaded our research paper that we got from our attacker, and we've thrown it against all of these um, antivirus um, detection I don't know, programs, I guess. So McAfee did detect it upon execution, um, so on and so forth. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I guess it's a really scary thought because imagine this Word document going through a massive company and, you know, clients just, or not clients, more, yeah, even clients or, um, or potential employees just double-clicking on this document and then this backtrack um, attacker would just get shells for all of these computers on that in that company. So it's a really scary thought, and I think that McAfee should enable um, macro detection upon Word document execution, but I don't know, we'll see what they do there. I'll write an email or something, um, obviously before I post this video. <laughs> so there we have it guys. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to try and keep uploading videos of my research and uh, I'm actually really curious to see if we can just traverse still. Um, it's been so long since I've used a window shell. But yeah, I guess the process is still open. We can still traverse through the uh, directory listings and do whatever we really want on the victim's machine.